England find themselves in a precarious position in their bid to reach next summer's European Championships finals. Steve McLaren's men have no margin for error as the crucial stretch in qualification begins today against Israel. Welcome to Wembley Stadium and our coverage here on ESPN. I'm Adrian Healy. Tommy Smith joining me for commentary. Tommy, this is a game England simply have to win. Yeah, when you look at the table, it becomes very, very easy to understand why. Russia 18, Croatia 17, Israel 17. OK, they've a game played more, but England have 14. So the job now is to make sure that Croatia, Russia and Israel don't get away from England. And nothing bar a win will help that today, because if Israel win this one, England are in real trouble, Adrian. Yes, that table is a theoretical one, given the fact that Russia are in action against Macedonia. They lead by a goal to nil. England have a game in hand over Israel, can catch up with the three points, but they know they have Russia to come here at the brand new Wembley Stadium on Wednesday. And it's a place where they haven't yet won, albeit uh, their two friendly games have been against uh, some high profile opposition. It was Germany who came here just uh, a couple of weeks ago and inflicted a 2-1 defeat on Steve McLaren's men. But it's a competitive Euro 2008 qualifying action for you today. We'll bring you the team news and take you through to the kickoff next. Finding your perfect match has never been so easy. Just text your location on 0428 222 and connect to speed dating now. There's girls and guys out there waiting for your text. It's easy, fun and immediate. Speed dating. Foxtel is changing the way you watch TV. Because with Foxtel IQ, we give you access to the best entertainment Foxtel has on offer. And you can watch it straight away. It's called On Demand. No more waiting for the show to start. You just press the TV guide button, then the red button. And the shows are already there waiting for you. Now you can watch TV the way you want. And it's only available on your Foxtel IQ. On Demand. Ready when you are. To upgrade to Foxtel IQ, call this number today. For honour. For freedom. For victory. For tradition. For courage. For power. Follow the rise and fall of the rulers and kingdoms that have shaped our world. Harem. The Sultan was considered to be above society. Pagans. Magic was a matter of life and death. Shaka Zulu. The most powerful spirits were focused through the king. Ten days that made the queen. Absolutely everything came secondary to morality. Life and death in Rome. They turned murder into mass entertainment. Join the Empire for Rulers and Kingdoms Month during September on the History Channel. Wembley, this is Steve McLaren's lineup and a return for Emil Heskey from the international wilderness the good news for england was that uh, steve gerrard is fit to play and didn't even require a pain-killing injection in his toe tommy yeah this is a you know this is a lineup that well he's hoped can do some damage owen and heskey up front it'll be interesting to see how those two go right phillips gerrard barry and that's a surprise across midfield alongside a cole and uh, richard terry ferdinand and cole across the back area Yes, Gareth Barry has actually been in the international wilderness longer than Emil Heskey. His last start for England came back in November of 2000, but he'll anchor the centre of midfield behind Stephen Gerrard. That releases Joe Cole and Sean Wright Phillips to wreak havoc on the flanks. Paul Robinson maintains his manager's confidence, and uh, Steve McLaren was quick to point out that he made that decision early. In fact, just two days after the Germany game, he decided he was going to keep Robinson in goal. Well, there's no, uh, there's no uh, knowing why you make a decision like that. Obviously, uh, you know, you can't have that much confidence. I don't think he could have that much confidence in him. Now, we talked about injury woes for England, for Draw Kashtan and the Israelis. So perhaps uh, someone of more significance is out there. Top scorer, Roberto Colauti, the uh, Argentine turned Israeli international. Their top scorer is unavailable due to a thigh strain. Well, Ben Ayun would be coming behind the Yitzhaki. It would be uh, Spongyun, Katan. Aidan Tal and Badir across midfield. Benado, Benamin, uh, Gerson uh, will be trying to anchor down that defense. And they might come under a bit of pressure today, but this, don't write this Israel team off, folks. This is a pretty good looking outfit, let me tell you. And we are underway at Wembley Stadium, the first competitive action for England here after uh, two high profile friendlies to open up life at their new home. Brazil in June and Germany just a couple of weeks ago, but this is where it really counts. Nothing less than three points 
the required recipe for success today for England and probably the same again against Russia on Wednesday Israel though come in trying to be the spoilers and uh, really uh, fairly confident they have a good chance of doing so they've made a habit of upsetting big teams in the last two or three years they went through uh, their last World Cup qualification campaign undefeated Tommy yeah came up with a couple of big draws against France and Ireland and uh, this is a big big day for Israel I mean they they're not afraid to sit back there and they're not afraid to absorb a lot of punishment and they don't mind if they get out of here with a nil nil draw would suit them fine believe me and uh, they're not going to worry about style points or anything else it's a case of what the end result is England going from left to right and on the attack straight away so and ball into the Israeli penalty area, which was just shielded away by Shimon Gershon. Well, Steve Gerrard having a go at somebody already felt that it should have been a corner kick. It'll oh. be interesting to see. I think he's limping a little. I, I, I don't think he's running at full tilt. Maybe there is, you know, maybe it's my imagination, but it just looks like he's dragging one of those pegs after him. Well, so much emphasis was placed on Gerard's availability for Steve McLaren this week, given Frank Lampard dropping out early in the week. It was Lampard's unavailability that paved the way for Emil Heskey to be recalled to the squad. That's the man they're trying to beat today, Dudu Awat, the Israeli keeper who plies his trade in Spain. Yeah, and a pretty good goalkeeper he is, uh, although he's a little bit like Robinson. When he's bad, he can be really bad. This is Yaniv Kadam. Israel lining up ostensibly in a 4-1-4-1 formation. Kadam, who wears number 20, is a forward normally, but he's being asked to play more of a wide role today. And Barak Itzaki will be the long striker for Israel. Well, you can see they have a lot of confidence in Kadam. So far, they've gone to him a number of times. Sean Wright Phillips. That was an energetic burst into the Israeli area. He was picked out, but the ball arrived at an awkward height for the Chelsea winger well this ball driven long I mean it used to look like a Jack Charlton pass from days gone by for Ireland you generally don't associate that big high ball over the top from England but maybe they're trying to catch this very compact uh, Israeli defense out by maybe pumping a few of those long balls in and have Sean Wright Phillips run in on one side and maybe break it down to Heskey or something I'd be very interesting to see how Heskey went I thought his career internationally was over Adrian not just recently but a long time ago he won the last of his 43 caps against France in Euro 2004 when he came off the bench and actually conceded a free kick from which Zinedine Zidane scored he hasn't appeared since that moment this is his first start. You English guys have long memories, haven't you? Huh? You well, remember a, the free kick that he gave away. It's, a, it's a painful memory, John. I, I thought that I was being hard on him. <laughs> his last start, November of 2003. But you can't fault the goal scoring record of Heskey and Owen together as a partnership. They made 12 starts and produced 14 goals between them. Four of them, of course, came that memorable night in Munich. Yeah, but I think that's what uh, McLaren was going by. I think McLaren was just looking at a little bit of history and hoping that maybe history would repeat itself. This man doesn't care. He doesn't care whether history repeats itself or not. Well, he's described as the Sir Alex Ferguson of Israel, is at draw Kashtan. He's uh, 62, known as a disciplinarian. His defence are going to have to be disciplined here because Owen is into the area. Right, Phillips. Another lackluster cross from him. Barry trying to pick up the pieces, but uh, Israel managing to clear their lines. Awata was in real trouble coming out that time. Now, Sean Wright Phillips has got round the back again. Heskey was begging for the cross to be played into him. Wright Phillips couldn't find the required elevation. Well, I'll tell you, if Ziv doesn't take Sean Wright Phillips out of this game a little bit, uh, if he doesn't mark him a little bit closer and try to, to block him down a little bit, that's three times now that Sean Wright Phillips went for the ball, three times he beat Ziv. That's not good in the first four minutes. That doesn't encourage the defenders. Now the left-footed Gareth Barry to swing this one into the near post. It's a good service. Israel were at full stretch to clear their lines. And Barry rather stood on the ball to take away the second opportunity. Yossi Benayoun, player very familiar to all the Premiership opponents in England shirts. Captaining Israel today, Benayoun. 
no question about it. He's a man who could change the game. He's a man who could turn the game on his head very, very quickly. You saw that nice run there when he picked up the ball on his own end of the field. And that's something that he's very capable of. He's also very capable of sticking the ball in the back of the net. Referee this evening, uh, Peter Vink from the Netherlands. That's the man who's had the problem so far, Ziv. Now, Benny Yoon corralling. This is where he can be so effective. Space between uh, midfield and defence. That's what prompted uh, Liverpool to uh, splash out the cash and sign him over the summer. The more low-profile signings they made, perhaps, but... Uh, Messi Benoun, Benoun following in the footsteps of uh, Avi Cohen and Ronnie Rosenthal, Israeli internationals who played for Liverpool as Emil Heskey is ensnared uh, offside. And I know this is not necessarily true, but Israel don't need to win today. I mean, the, the emphasis is not on a win, as you see Heskey in an offside position, like it is for England. Israel getting out of here with a draw would suit them very, very fine. England getting out of here with a draw, I don't think it helps the cause at all, Adrian. Well, it's been another impressive qualifying campaign for draw, Kashtan's men. Their only blemish, uh, a 4-3 home defeat to Croatia. They're undefeated on their travels. That included uh, a 1-1 draw in Russia. Victories away from home against Macedonia, Andorra and Estonia. And Israel not in action on Wednesday, so this... Uh, game for them in this particular round of qualifiers this is Heskey Owen standing off and the challenge was from Alec Bernardo yeah you just wonder how uh, sharp is Michael Owen after all the time that he's been off and I mean he's just had a disastrous career the young man with injuries Idan Tal, another ex-premiership player, bundled over this time to uh, win the free kick for the Israelis. There's Zutsky after eight minutes, but Russia ahead, and they're still holding on to that lead, 1-0 over Macedonia. That would be a big three points. I mean, I know Russia would be expected to get those three points, but what you expect to do and what you can do nowadays in European football is sometimes a matter of question, and... Uh, it's much easier to say, OK, they should get three points, but sometimes you don't, and that would be a big three points for Russia. Yes, Croatia, the group leaders, also in action today at home to Estonia. That would appear to be three points for them as well. So today, all about making up the ground on Israel for England. Yeah, because if you figure Russia are going to get the three points and Croatia are going to get the three points, it really puts the pressure on England. One of them slips up, hey, it's a great break for England. Provided England don't slip up. Well, after such a uh, bright start to Steve McLaren's uh, reign, England have actually just won two of their last nine internationals, both of them 3-0 away wins. It's Andorra, Andorra and Estonia. And you have to go back over a year since they've won at home. 5-0 success against Andorra last September. That's what Israel want to do, just nick it into touch here and there, get a touch on it. Keep the ball around midfield. Gerard from deep, Sean Wright Phillips though, let the ball get away from him, and Gerard picking up the pieces and trying to drive on. And those two uh, blanket walls of four have uh, certainly doused England's early ambitions here. Now then, some space in the area for Owen, setting up Heskey! Oh, what a return that would have been from the international wilderness. Emil Heskey firing over the top from relatively close range. Oh, that was a great opportunity. Michael Owen played it very well. Once again, Ziv is nowhere in the picture here. And uh, My Heskey comes up with the opportunity and slaps it up over the top. Beautiful ball from Barry. Great control from Michael Owen. Emil Heskey... Mm -hmm. well, he's been in uh, scintillating form with Wigan. And she played against Michael Owen last weekend and uh, saw Owen score his first Premier League goal for quite some time. This is Heskey. Joe Cole to Ashley Cole. His cross, though, headed away by Adek Bernardo. 
who's uh, a defensive midfielder, the most capped Israeli player ever. This is Benny Yoon. Great player with the ball at his feet, great player to make space, and a, a, just a great dribbler. He's just a good all round player, Benny Yoon. And uh, used to the big occasion as well. They played so well for West Ham United in the Cup final a couple of seasons ago against Steven Gerrard in Liverpool. Oh, he's uh, a teammate of Gerrard's. This is uh, England captain John Jerry. Comes to Rio Ferdinand. McLaren talks very, very glowingly about Ferdinand, but says he has to step up. That's a terrible ball. You can't give it away like that. And that was Joe Cole, who was the culprit. It's uh, Barak. It's Zaki, who's found Katan. Oh, Katan just took a bad step for some reason. I'm not sure who. Oh, Ziv steps in that time, all right. Yoab Ziv for Israel. Ziv waiting for reinforcements. And Israel passing the ball crisply and effectively. This is Ziv once more. They've beaten the offside trap here, or have they? Robinson came out. The flag was slow to come up, but did come up eventually. Itzaki was trapped. Well, we've seen a better set of Ziv coming forward, and we have seen him going back. And he certainly combined very well with Katan. Very, very close play. You could see England trying to close them down, trying to give them no time on the ball. But uh, Israel just stood there and moved the ball around nicely. Owen spreading the play for Micah Richards. Right back for England after playing centre-back for his club, Manchester City. Heskey has shrugged off one defender, but it was a, cover a recovering challenge from Gershon. And what an important one it was. To be honest, Heskey looks very sharp out there. He he's doing everything right. He's uh, just pushing around his defenders a little bit. He is a big man. I mean, if you can give him the ball where he can shrug off a bit of a shoulder or that, he's good. Now a spirit of venture from Micah Richards. Oh, the young 19-year-old has uh, really excelled this season at the heart of Sven Joran Eriksson's defence. Playing it right back for England. Looks uh, equally comfortable. Yeah, he's looked good now a number of times going forward. He's got to be careful, but Katan is lurking around behind him. And if he gives him space, Katan was in on goal only for a bad uh, stumble there a couple of minutes ago. This is Joab Ziv. Uh, Idan Tal, who played with, uh, with Bolton Wanderers and Everton briefly in the Premier League. That was a good move by Ferdinand to read it and just step into it. Dantal uh, in the news this week for his comments about English football, describing it as ugly. To which Owen Hargreaves replied, Idan who? Was he talking about the football or the players? <laughs> or the supporters? I didn't know, quite understand what he was talking about. Now some space for Michael Owen, slips it out to Ashley Cole. Well, England have got themselves into positions to deliver telling crosses and the final ball hasn't quite matched the approach play so far. The one thing I would say is that English football is not ugly. Let me tell you, English football is exciting. Well, the bank balance isn't ugly, that's for sure, Donald. There's a lot of money in English football right now. Rio Ferdinand. It's retrieved by Gareth Barry. Now Ashley Cole. Tal Ben Haim. Clearing the lines for Israel. But England persistent. Gerard's run was spotted by Bernardo. And it was a body check just outside the area. And this is going to be the first booking of the encounter. In fact, it's Shimon Gershon, well aware of the danger that Gerard was posing, arriving late. Yeah, telling him not to keep his lip going. It just takes him out of it. It's a simple opportunity here. But nicely again, Heskey played it nicely. That was good understanding between Heskey and Gerard. But Gerard is so good at making those powerful runs, Adrian. Whether he has the ball or whether he doesn't have the ball. Now, will it be Steven Gerrard with the right foot or perhaps Gareth Barry with the left? His left foot is a weapon. 
for Ashton Villa. Hasn't scored for England in 10 previous appearances, Gareth Barry. And this is a similar spot on the field from which Steven Gerrard scored earlier this season against Aston Villa. It's Gerrard delivering. Terry was arriving late. Perhaps looking for a replica of that England goal against Brazil when it was Beckham. Yeah, Beckham to float it in at that back post. But you can see Terry make the run. Look at he arrives late. Good defending here. Just take the ball away from him, make sure. I don't think that Terry would have gotten to it, but as a defender, you can't take a chance, and that's again a situation. You had to clear it out. Gerrard hanging a high corner in there, and Heskey climbed above everyone, but powered his header down and wide. Well, Heskey's really trying to make a statement here. Played very well in the first 17 minutes. This time he just rises up over a couple of defenders. He pushes them out of the way. He pushes. You can't afford. It's Zach. He can't let himself be pushed around like that by Heskey. But that's all I was talking about, Adrian. He has the ability. He's a big man. And he's like one of those old-time battering ram centre forwards. He will push you around. Well, he only scored five goals in 43 appearances. It was his goal-scoring record that was always uh, the issue that raised most doubts over Emil Heskey three or four years ago. Never was the most prolific of goal scorers, but that partnership with Michael Owen. And if you believe all the reports you, lead, you read, it was Michael Owen's uh, preference that Heskey was the one that was recalled. I'm not going to start. You know my opinion about players picking teams. Oh, it was disappointing there from Tal Ben Haim. He almost agreed with you there. Made the move from Bolton to Chelsea. This uh, past summer. Now Heskey again making himself available. Gareth Barry. Cross it just hung up on its way. Cross field to Ashley Cole. Not alone that, it was basically behind him. He had a weight on it. Now Joe Cole has had uh, so little uh, playing time with Chelsea this year. Rio Ferdinand. Tal Ben Haim away. And this time Ferdinand committing the infringement, trying to retrieve the situation. Well, that back four of Israel is going to be, it, it's really flat, but it's strong and it's standing its ground. And the four midfield, the four across midfield are coming back. There's very little room between the midfielders and the back four. I think England's best opportunity is to try to dump it in behind them and put pressure on them that way because there's nothing between them. Now Benny Hume with options. Slips it outside to Yaniv Katan, but just a moment's hesitation allowed Richards to nip in. But Katan's having all kinds of problems holding his footing. It's, it's almost like he's so nervous about this occasion. Every time he goes to the ball, it looks like he's taking bad steps. Catan, one of seven Israeli starters who play their trades in their home country. He plays with Maccabi Haifa. England had uh, everyone except Emil Heskey back to deal with the corner. Israel have gone all the way back to Dudu Awat. And he makes a terrible clearance. I mean, he makes a hash of it. But you can see Israel's mentality Nil nil is fine. Well, is Dudu Awak going to have one of those uh, evenings that uh, opposing goalkeepers seem to crop up with now and again at Wembley against England? Joe Cole checking back inside, then delivering the cross. It's a good one, Wright Phillips! Sean Wright Phillips with his first goal for England since his debut over three years ago. And just the perfect start for Steve McLaren's men. Like I said, there's room behind that defence. There was no room between midfielder and the defence. Watch this. Watch Sean Wright Phillips make his move. Oh, he's offside. He's offside, but he got away with it. Great ball, great pass, looks up, good finish by Sean Wright-Phillips. Again, 
that man that I've been picking on all day since the game started, Ziv, let him go, and McLaren almost pushed that one into the net himself. But you can't, I, I've said it earlier, Ziv can't afford to let Sean Wright Phillips have that kind of room. If he does, he will destroy him. It was the right stuff for England from Sean Wright Phillips. The two wingers combining, Tommy, to great effect, even if the decision was a marginal one. Yep. Hey, you take what you get. Now Israel have a problem because they haven't really shown us that they're capable of attacking and maybe getting themselves to score. England immediately have earned themselves another free kick. They took the lead here against Germany. They took the lead here against Brazil. Those two previous friendlies and uh, didn't win either of them. Ashley Cole seeking Ferdinand. Dudu Awat came an awful long way to reach it. I just have a feeling this thing might be a little different than Brazil and Germany. I just have that feeling that uh, I think Israel might be in a, or uh, England might be in a little bit better shape here. Ferdinand was penalised for going over the top. I mean, the two teams just talked about had players who were capable of sticking the ball at the back of the net. And I know that Ben Ayan can score, but uh, it's going to be a tough, tough grind on him here. That's Israel's first ever competitive game on English soil. Three previous meetings between the two sides were all in Israel. And nil-nil draw back in March. And you have to go back to 1986 for the last English victory against Israel. Brian Robson got two goals in a narrow 2-1 win. Here's the man with the goal today, Sean Wright Phillips. It's a pretty good-looking service, but uh, it was Bernardo who got it away. Barry. Seeking out Ashley Cole, you'll see Banayoun to come all the way back to uh, put a blanket over the danger. Now, what can Israel offer as an attacking force? Mika Richards ensuring that it's nothing on this occasion. August of 2004 is when Sean Wright Phillips made his debut in a friendly against Ukraine scored a stunning goal that night. Many people thought he would push on and become a mainstay of the England side for some time to come. And, of course, that ambition rather went off the rails with a disappointing spell to start off with at Chelsea. This is Idan Tal with a disappointing cross. Oh, that's very disappointing. Just up over the top. It's the first time, really, that uh, they have threatened and here's the ball coming inside right onto Sean Wright Phillips' boot. You can see some of the Israeli defenders complaining that he was offside, but the flag never went up, and Chris finish. Well, something that his father, Ian Wright, used to do on so many occasions. Put the ball in the back of the net for England. Showing the gaffer, Joe Zaid, that maybe he deserves a spot in this Chelsea team. He really has... Uh, Stepped it up a notch, I think it's fair to say, uh, Tommy, from about the midpoint of last season. Started to see the Sean Wright Phillips that we'd seen at Manchester City earlier in his career. There's one of his Chelsea teammates, uh, Frank Lampard, with uh, Peter Crouch alongside. Lampard injured, Crouch suspended for this one, will be available. Selection against Russia on Wednesday. This is Bernardo. Ball getting away from Benny Yoon, who snaps in there. That was, uh, that was a hospital pass back to John Terry from Rio Ferdinand. Draw Kashtan, who was uh, actually at Wembley in 1966 when uh, England won the World Cup, the old Wembley Stadium, of course. Well, uh, undefeated against France, Switzerland and Ireland in the 
last World Cup qualifying campaign. That was under Avram Grant. Draw Kashtan took over. That, would, that wouldn't be good news for uh, England if this man were to get injured. John Terry. Another player has been speaking very candidly about playing with injections. And ben Ewan also uh, slightly the worst for wear at the moment. Funny, they're giving Ben Ayun a really bad time here. Himself and Terry have a clash of knees and legs, and they're all in together. Well, it was that pass from Ferdinand back to Terry that left uh, the England captain at full stretch to uh, clear the danger. It's Zaki, it's the player who followed through and got uh, Terry's ankle instead of the ball, it appeared. But fans are very fickle, aren't you? There's Liverpool fans there probably booing him. Next week, he'll be a lord if he could score for them. Uh, limping off, but uh, certainly looking like he'll be able to continue winning his 60th cap tonight. Israel at the age of 27. It'll be fascinating to see what uh, role he plays uh, for Liverpool as the season unfolds. So many weapons for Rafa Benitez as the Israel free kick is drifted into the penalty area. It's Katan. And it's Zaki working hard. Well, Ziv turned away from Gareth Barry, who caught him. Barry, better be careful. Well, some of the uh, English momentum has just dissipated over the last few minutes since the goal. Israel starting to enjoy more of the ball now. This is uh, their most promising situation to date. Yeah, they've spent a little while in the English half. Hidan Tao has uh, six targets to aim for us. The corner, or the free kick comes in, and it was an excellent header away from Micah Richards. Side against uh, that man, Barak Idzaki. Scored uh, 11 minutes into his uh, national team debut in June against Macedonia. Well, this time the ball driven inside and uh, good defending here. Richards does very well with a backward header away. So he's going to get himself into an offside position and never got back on. Now Israel uh, trying to get themselves kick-started again. It's uh, a forceful run. Far side by uh, Spungen. Steven Gerrard put an end to that. On again with uh, Benny Yoon. Trying to corral an awkward bouncing ball and he couldn't do so. trying to continue a stretch of qualification for the European Championships which stretches back to 1984 that was the last time they missed out when the finals were held in France they haven't actually lost a home at European qualifier since that campaign which was against Denmark in September of 83 Sean sure, Wright Phillips bundled over by the man he's been uh, tormenting earlier on, Yoav Ziv. And this time Ziv does get a little bit of help because uh, Bernardo's coming over to help cover him, so Ziv gives away a very unnecessary free kick here and a very dangerous free kick. Well, the angle is perfect for Gary, Gareth Barry to really uh, set up an examination of the Israeli defence here. Barry oh, seeking out Richards, but uh, well claimed by Dudu Awat. Oh, the keeper made a very positive move off his line, Adrian. That's where you miss Beckham. Well, we've seen a lot of Dudu Awat over the past few seasons in Spain, Tomic. Three years at Racing. Now into his second year with Deportivo. Well, he's a quality keeper, I mean, there's no questioning that. 
You know, exactly. But since they give up the goal, Israel are starting to push forward a little bit and have showed signs of perhaps that they can't attack. Of course, they have to attack now down a goal. Saki able to hold off one challenge, but not the second. Half an hour in at Wembley Stadium. England a goal to the good, courtesy of Sean Wright Phillips. Heskey coming out, throwing his weight around and got penalised. Catan back inside, going for the return ball. No decision this time. Catan turning around in the direction of uh, Peter Vink and wondering where the whistle was. Since some of the frustration of the crowd here, Tom, you, England have certainly taken the foot off the gas. They've got what they wanted, the early lead. Crowd eager for them to push on, and Mika Richards is doing just that. Well, obstruction is the verdict. Oh, I can't believe that call. I don't believe that. Ziv is very unfortunate here because Mika Richards just ran up over him. It's like being on the highway and some guy runs into the back of you. Watch this. I mean, he's all over him. That, that's not a foul against England. That's a foul in favour of Israel. Well, Ziv is uh, known for his versatility. He can play... Uh, both full pack positions or in the center of defense or occasionally a striker, but uh, hasn't played much today yet, anywhere. Oh, another free kick from a similar sort of angle out on the England right. This time it's Gerard. Do do a wax, or they get a clean punch. Gerard picking out Heskey. It's well worked. Barry with the cross. Owen was rising to meet it, but Watt towering above him. Joe Cole now. Heskey on the turn. Wasn't much on it when he shot. Watt's clearance with Yaniv Katan underneath. So much made of the English absentees, of course, this week. You could almost pick a starting 11 out of those players not available for Steve McLaren. But you still can't help feeling, Tommy, that it's the Israeli absence of Roberto Colati, which might be the most significant yet in this game. Without a doubt, I mean, when you have a good striker, a man who can put the ball in the net and he's not there, hey, you know, you've got a lot of things to make up for. England, I know, have a lot of good players out injured, but, you know, they have a lot of good players too that they can bring in. This is just foolish by Gerard. He goes up over the top and, and, and takes Badia down. Walid Badia, who uh, spent a season in English football with uh, Wimbledon. He just scored his only English goal at Old Trafford against Manchester United. Barry on to Joe Cole, wanted it played back, Cole took it on himself, well, some confusion in the middle of the Israeli defence, but in the end, no harm done as the ball drifts across without a meaningful touch. Oh, there was an ideal opportunity here, watch Heskey, he makes the move inside, and the ball is just played a little bit too far in, good ball, searching ball through, Cole with a couple of nice moves, here's the effort, he clubbed his foot a little bit, Michael... Uh, Owen missed getting on to the end of it, and, and Heskey was also in the neighbourhood. I'm sure Steve McLaren will have noted the ease with which Joe Cole took on and beat his club teammate there, Tal Ben Haim. I, I, I'm not convinced that uh, he's a good fullback. This is Spungin. Ben Ayun. I think the English crowd felt that this that England should push on and put this one away. They had uh, Israel basically on the back foot after they give up the goal, and they've allowed Israel to settle down again now and get themselves into the game. They're not rushing anything here. They realise, hey, it's 1-0, plenty of time. But that back line has better be very careful. They're leaving a lot of room behind them. Terrible ball. 
Gerard's pass easily cut out. Benny Yoon trying to immediately uh, turn the tables. Some of these English players better be careful. The way this referee's calling it, he's calling it very tight. Now Ziff with uh, Sean Wright Phillips oh. for company, and uh, he's turned the tables on Wright Phillips, who's been giving him a torrid time, but at the other end, he's carved out another free kick for his side in a promising spot. Well, he goes to make the move around him, and Sean Wright Phillips is lucky he doesn't get carded on that. That could have been a yellow one very easily. Now, oh, Ben Ayoun. What can he serve up here with uh, certainly some weaponry to aim for? Ben Ayoun near post. Not what the doctor ordered. Gerard's it header away. Didn't strike it well at all. It doesn't get by the first man. You know, you're in a situation where you only got a couple of chances in the half. You get a great free kick opportunity. You gotta, you gotta find somebody inside of the box with a blue shirt on. You can't let the first man knock it down. Micah Richards, who became the uh, seventh youngest player ever to represent uh, England, made his debut last November. Now Heskey. Sean Wright Phillips, the touch off is a beautiful one. Michael Owen, second chance. Well, Dudu Awat saved the first effort with his face and wouldn't have known much about the second effort, but Owen ballooned it over the top. Yeah, this is well set up. Heskey did very well, but Michael Owen, great opportunity here. Hit the keeper under the chin with it, and then he hit somebody behind the stand with it. All he had to do was take his time, Adrian. The keeper, as you said, was down and probably out. I mean, he got nailed right in the face. I'm not sure why the crowd are giving him a hard time because there is no question he took the brunt of Michael Owen's shot right on the, right under the chin. Well, we've seen opposing goalkeepers come and uh, perform heroics, dating right back to uh, Jan Tomaszewski, the Polish clown, as he was called. Well, this was uh, no laughing matter for Dudu or what. Kept the ball out of the night. A beautiful pass inside by Wright Phillips. Sean Wright Phillips made a lovely move before. And more evidence of that Hiskey Owen partnership bearing some fruit. Hiskey and Owen actually uh, go back to the England under 18 side together. He is two years uh, Owen senior. Now, this is Joab Ziv. This time the challenge was a fair one from Wright Phillips. <laughs> 25 years old now, Sean Wright Phillips winning his 14th cap tonight. Nod on from Heskey, likewise from Owen. Owen settling. Right, Phillips. It's a loose pass, though. Benny Yoon realized it had gone astray and was quick to change direction. And that's asking too much of Itzaki. Well, Sean Wright Phillips almost went from hero to go right there. That was a terrible attempt at a pass across the field. Ashley Cole and Joe Cole. Gareth Barry across to Ferdinand. Falls for Barry. Nice looking pass. Now Owen on the turn. And the save was a good one from Dudu Awax. Ashley Cole thought he might have had his first ever England goal there. He's uh, teed it into the middle once again. Heskey desperately trying to link up with Owen. England have Israel firmly on the back foot here. 
trying to put her away before they go into the dressing room at half time. Cole had a great opportunity, but a what? Another magnificent save. They build again on the opposite flank. Micah Richards flowing with confidence. Barry has looked very assured. This is Joe Cole. This time Gershon rose to the challenge. Inside the final five minutes of the first half. And John Terry has carved out another English free kick, but Ashley Cole, who's never scored for England, is right on the doorstep just a moment or so ago. It looked like the keeper had overplayed the ball. Michael Owen slips it out to him. Watch the keeper coming out. Yeah, he had overplayed the ball, but he just got enough on it to touch it down, and then it was cleared off the line. Winning his 59th camp tonight. Ashley Cole, in his debut back in March of 2001. Was uh, Sven Joran Eriksson's third game. Steve McLaren's 13th tonight in charge of uh, the English national side. 83 minutes in the Russian game now. Robinson really hasn't been tested tonight. A lot of English fans hope that it continues that way. Yeah, not a save of note to make for Robinson as he's seen his opposite number. Dudu Awat already produced uh, a couple of notable ones to keep the lead to just one. Barry. Ashley Cole. Heskey found a pocket of space, but the ball was beyond him. Gerard's battling Quadrilles uh, coming to the fore again. He's struggling, but he's just not in the game. He's, he's struggling to get into the game. He's... He's trying his heart out to get into the game, but it's not just working for him. Gerard on by Heskey. Right, Phillips. Around one challenge. Owen at full stretch. Couldn't quite connect. And then the follow-up header drifts away from the target. It's funny how soft the centre of that... Israeli defence looks, but yet and all they haven't given up anything because of basically bad finishing here. This was a great opportunity again. I think I would have given it a wrap. I think it would have hit it right there instead of passing it across into the middle. All right, Phillips trying to turn provider this time from close range. And slide in Michael Owen. Steve McLaren busying his half-time notes. Do you imagine the uh, message might be to the England players, Tommy? Yeah, I think he would like them to be a little bit more decisive. I think they've had the opportunities that could have this game salted away. 2-0 is going to be very, very difficult for Israel to come back. 1-0, anything can happen. You know, you make a mistake, goalkeeper makes a mistake, something like that. But 2-0, it's going to be very, very difficult for Israel to come back. But England have had the chance to make it 2-0, and, and they haven't managed to push on forward after they got that goal, Adrian. Well, they certainly have re-energised after a fallow period immediately following the go-ahead goal. This is Ashley Cole. All 11 Israelis back. Suggesting they would like to get in at half-time. Just the one goal deficit. Micah Richards making inroads. Well, a bit of anger on the part of Alec Bernardo, claiming Richards perhaps left a foot in there. Well, the, the referee's going to talk to somebody. And Peter Vink. Indeed. Uh, Shows the yellow card. Eric Bernardo, Israel's most capped player ever, normally plays at the heart of the uh, defence. 
booked for protesting too strongly. Into stoppage time. There's Gerard. Serves in another English corner. It's Benny Una gets this one away. Gerard will have a chance to re-deliver. Gershon away. And Idan Tal completing the job. Two minutes of stoppage time. McLaren can be happy, but he can't be all that happy. I mean, they have a lead. They've looked good, but Israel are still in the game. Ashley Cole seeking out Sean Wright Phillips. Now, is there time for Israel to uh, launch uh, a serious threat on the English goal? It hasn't happened yet in this first half. They're not going in that direction. Just foolish play on Israel's part. They give it, take it away. Well, that'll do it for the first half. Has to be a satisfying 45 minutes for uh, Steve McLaren. As always, an English manager under pressure. When is one not under pressure? He asked the question, but uh, pressure certainly relieved by Sean Wright Phillips' uh, relatively early strike in this one. And it's his goal that separates the side. England one, Israel nil. We'll be right back to Wembley after this short break. Welcome back to Wembley Stadium. England's first competitive international at their new home is going according to plan on the evidence of the first 45 minutes. England 1, Israel 0. Adrian Healy with Tommy Smith alongside uh, here for ESPN. And uh, really the only uh, shadow, Tommy, over that first half was uh, England's inability to increase their lead. It probably should have been more. Yeah, they should have pushed on after they got the goal. They had a couple of great opportunities. And... Uh, well, we'll be seeing what's going to happen in the second half very shortly because uh, I don't think Israel looks like capable of scoring Israel. Well, these are some other games to come later on, later kickoffs this uh, Saturday evening in Europe. Italy against France, of course, the big one from the San Siro in Milan. And Italy really need all three points in that game, given uh, France's victory when the two sides met in Paris last September. Holland against Bulgaria is another big one, and you can see that game with us uh, here on ESPN. You forgot one. There's another big one too, Ed. Could possibly be Ireland, could it, Tommy? Yeah, they're playing today, are they? <laughs> Slovakia. Oh, my Lord. Well, the players coming back out. Gareth Barry in the forefront of your picture. Sean Wright Phillips, of course, uh, the goal scorer. Barry looked impressive in that first half, Tommy, coming back uh, into the side a couple of substitute appearances under Steve McLaren, but uh, looked right at home alongside Steve Gerrard. Yeah, he certainly did, and, uh, you know, he moved the ball around well. Gerrard struggled a little bit, but even when Gerrard's struggling, he, he's better than a lot of guys who are playing well. I mean, he made a couple of very telling runs. He, he keeps pressure on, on players, even though he doesn't have the ball, and even though he doesn't look like he's doing much. It does keep a defence honest when he's out there. I would say McLaren is saying, OK, you've got to push on here, you've got to get a goal. You've got to get make this 2-0. Tamuz is on. Well, they are going to make a change up front. Uh, that was uh, the questions swirling at half-time because uh, really Barak Itzaki had made a pre precious little headway as the lone striker. So Toto Tamuz, uh, Tamile, who... Uh, uh, just 19 comes on to win his uh, eighth cap he scored two goals but both of them in this campaign came against Andorra really the minnows of the group plays his football with uh, Baitar Jerusalem does uh, Toto Tamuz Russia have won. The national anthem ringing around Wembley Stadium. As England look to open up the second half with a flourish. Joe Cole doing just that. It was an inventive run by him, cutting back inside. Well, if he is 
at all rusty from lack of club action. It's not showing today, Tommy. No, he's uh, he's played very well. He provided a goal. He's provided a couple of good opportunities. The English team have performed pretty solidly without being spectacular. They've done enough to get themselves in front. And, you know, three points or three points, it doesn't matter how you get them. But they have been anything but impressive, Adrian. England looking to make up the ground on Israel. Started the day three points behind them, but with a game in hand. Four of their last five games in this uh, Euro qualifying campaign at home. Yossi Benayoun. He's continued on himself. This is Tammuz. Benayoun's little touch. Well, the egg, the pie a little bit too much, and uh, Steve McLaren is lucky that he didn't see something bad happen. He wouldn't have seen it, he was late, but uh, Ben Ayan almost walked in. Suddenly Tammuz, a more uh, physical striker, bigger build than the man he replaced, Ben Akidzaki. Now Yanif Katan trying to work against Micah Richards. Richards winning the battle with Conchi with ease and not a bad pass either. For Sean Wright Phillips who checks back to the outside. Free uh, was trying to play advantage there but eventually uh, realised there was none unfolding. Well Richards having a great game at uh, right full back. He is a good young player and a uh, very very bright prospect. It's a case of now that Neville won't be missed at all. He says eventually he would like to play centre-back for England. Really is his preferred role. To he might have to wait a while for that, son. Seems to be uh, England's continued area of strength, doesn't it? In terms of depth. Clarence upset. Ashley Cole. Face uh, from Wally Badia. You can see the puts his head down here. And he did. He almost got it taken off. Wally Badia who scored one of the biggest goals in Israeli footballing history, an equaliser against France, which gave him a 1 1 draw. He really became a national hero that night. Barry, slide rule pass on the turn is Owen. Michael Owen with an absolute rocket from the edge of the area. And the consummate goal scorer has done it again for England. Oh, what a goal! What a beautiful goal. Watch Michael Owen, he's just on the edge of the box, turns, shoots. Bulge is the old onion bag. Just doesn't get any better than that, folks. Richards involved, gets it back out. Barry. Michael Owen is just at this, just stand off him a little bit. He has one step on it. Pesky runs interference for him. Beautiful ball from Barry. Great turn by Michael Owen and a great shot. Absolutely peach of a goal. That's the one England wanted. Goal number 38 of Michael Owen's international career as Israel try and hit back immediately. A shot from Yaniv Katan landing on the roof of the net. Michael Owen has moved a step closer to catching Bobby Charlton in terms of England's all-time goal-scoring record. Now 11 behind him. Where did everybody go? Maybe the... Uh, the queue was a bit long at half time, Tommy, for the pies. That's unbelievable how many people are missing here. Now Barry's delivery, seeking right Phillips. Now appeals for handball from the crowd more than the players.
Yanif Kadan giving chase, but uh, it was a flawed effort. Now, if Steve McLaren could have scripted what he wanted to happen in the first five minutes of the second half, I don't think he could have scripted it quite like this. Michael Owen with uh, top quality goal to give England that two goal cushion. Now, Ashley Cole. It's been such a trying two seasons, really, for Michael Owen, Tommy, hasn't it? With uh, injuries left, right and centre. Move back to English football with Newcastle. He's a very courageous player, Michael Owen. You, you just have to admire him. He never gives up. He sticks in there. As you said, he's had all kinds of uh, situations. His only previous goals this season to come against Barnsley. And Wigan. Now here he is at Wembley, putting England in the comfort zone. Richards towards Terry. It came off uh, Shimon Gershon, but uh, looped into the arms of Dudu Awak comfortably. First half heroics from the Israeli keeper, but uh, he's been two, beaten by two very good goals. Tommy. Well, the one thing that the one thing that's uh, troubling if you're an Israeli fan is his clearances. He just hasn't managed to get them to Israeli players. He's kept them in the game. He's made wonderful saves, all right, but uh, the clearances on the on the ball have been nothing special. Falls for Steven Gerrard. Heskey outside to right. Phillips. Cole was his, or rather, uh, Michael Owen was his intended target. Uh, Toto Tammuz spinning away from one challenge. Uh, barge his way through a second, but uh, Rio Ferdinand was the immovable object in his path. Well, Rio, Fer Rio Ferdinand wasn't having any of that. Ashley Cole checking inside. Right, Phillips was lurking. Header only half away. Gerard keeping the pressure firmly on the Israelis. Complete dominance now by England. They're, they're calling the shots. They're doing what they want to. They're keeping Israel pinned back in their own end of the field. Israel are not helping their own cause. Barry taking over. Michael Owen drifting wide left. Gareth Barry continuing his run. Oh, the cross flicked up off a defender. And backpedaling to great effect was Dudu Awat. Could have been real trouble for Dudu Awat. a footballing nation have only ever qualified for one major tournament it was uh, the 1970 World Cup as uh, the referee Peter Vink is forced to uh, dig in uh, for another yellow card the third Israeli booked is Yoav Ziv well Sean Wright Phillips has given him nightmares the speed has really hurt uh, I think that's a little bit harsh he just not that bad, Steve. Now. The English manager and players were calling upon the crowd to be the 12th man, trying to build a new fortress, Wembley. Of course, it's always easier for the crowd to respond when the team are playing well, Tommy. No question about that, and... Uh... England are just, it's a workman-like performance. They're getting the job done. They're going to get out of here with three points and leave themselves in a situation where they can get into that Russian game with, uh, with everything to play for. Things have taken a physical turn here as Joe Cole is uh, really, uh, rammed into there. It's uh, Yaval Spungin. 
made his debut in the meeting between the two sides back in March. Nil-nil on that occasion in Tel Aviv, but 2-0 here at Wembley. Six months later, much more to England's liking. Well, Romania were having trouble with Belarus, but they're in front of them now. Dika and Lutu, the scorers. And Belarus were actually the side that inflicted uh, defeat on Israel in uh, their friendly a couple of weeks ago. Lomachenko had scored for Belarus. So Romania continued to control that particular group. They're way, way ahead of everybody else. It's uh, Omar Golan who's going to come on now. Wearing number 12 for Israel. And he's uh, got the chance. Another striker. Now, draw Kashtan. Uh, has to perhaps uh, throw caution to the wind here. Taking off Alec Bernardo. The uh, defensive midfield position and throwing on Omar Golan. Plays for Maccabi uh, Pentatikva in Israel. Well, it should open things up a little bit more for England now. It should give them more uh, opportunities. Ashley Cole able to settle. He's basically going to play with two strikers now. It's been an unhurried and comfortable afternoon for Terry and Ferdinand. Paul Robinson has been a virtual spectator. He's a man who could yet change that though, Yossi Benayou. Bungin inside to Catan. Ferdinand needed to get there and did. He's been solid when needed. Anytime there's been any hint of problems, Ferdinand has come across and snuffed it out. Esky. Feel his presence has uh, unsettled this Israeli defence. Tommy, yes, he hasn't scored, but uh, he's been on the end of uh, so many little flicks and layoffs and has dragged defenders with him. It's the way he throws himself around as well. I mean, he will knock you out of your game very, very quickly. And Ashley Cole with time and space. Owens layoff. Joe Cole thought initially about the shot, almost rescued the situation. Clearance falls for Benayou. This is a clash of Liverpool teammates. Gerard did just enough to throw Benayou out of his stride. time given against Rio Ferdinand nice play by Israel just moving the ball around lovely little back heel and they still call him the kid in Israel Yossi Benayou Idan Tao look to serve this in as Israel look for a lifeline here in concentration from Ashley Cole giving the ball back to Spungen <laughs> certainly Tommy is unrealistic to expect to any national side to play a high tempo dominating game for 90 minutes there are going to be spells where England have a more fallow period perhaps this is not one of them because Ryan Phillips is on the run but Israel simply have to take advantage of uh, 
the next dip in England's momentum. Yeah, Israel need a goal. They need a goal in the worst possible way here if they're going to make a game of it. Richards weighing up his options from the long throw. Kasky was a good one, forced for Gerrard, who latched onto it. Left-footed, a little wince as well from Stevie Gerrard, who walks away just a little gingerly. Well, he has a broken toe. Yeah, to inject or not to inject was the question that seemed to be uh, gripping the nation this week. In the end, he didn't need one. I wonder whether uh, Steve McLaren might bring him off considerably early if he feels the game is won. Oh, I think he should. You've got to get him right, have him right for Wednesday. That's the big one now. Russia, another three points today, so uh, we expect the same from Croatia. England, if this result holds, will likely be in third place come the kickoff against Russia here on Wednesday night. Terry Venables alongside Steve McLaren. Well, just to take the heat off them for a while. Venables, of course, uh, didn't have to qualify for the European Championships during his tenure because uh, in 1996 they were held here in England. Venables got his side to the semi final, only to lose out on penalties to Germany. This is Barry. Gerard stayed in an advanced position. What a lovely ball for Joe Cole! Wonderful football from England. The Liverpool skipper to the Chelsea winger. Nicely done. Very simple little ball. Doesn't have to be, uh, you know, anything complicated. Just slip it in behind the defender. He had the defender running the wrong way. Benny Yoon's challenge, halting Gareth Barry's progress to the quickly worked corner. Gerard, though, is everywhere. Not enough to win the ball back for England. Now Ferdinand popping up as a left winger. That's a sign of how uh, comfortable England are. Hold to Owen. Stephen Gerrard right into the arms of Dudu Awad. Well, how often have we see, seen him hit sensational pops from out there? That one right down the goalkeeper's throat. Now, it's Israel on the move, and a chance here. Well, down goes Toto Tammuz. The ball rather got stuck underneath his feet, I fancy, there, and just allowed Terry and Ferdinand to recover. Well, that's what I was going to say about Ferdinand coming forward. You've got to be careful. I mean, you can't just take those kind of chances. If that ball had been hit a little bit harder, Oh, I don't know about the ball getting stuck under his feet. I think Ferdinand uh, got a clip on him. So perhaps a let-off for England. I haven't said that too many times tonight. Right, Phillips pushing on again, and uh, he's been brought down on numerous occasions. This time, uh, Shimon Gershon was the man to hold him in his tracks illegally. Gareth Barry. He's winning his 11th cap. He's actually played for five different England managers. Following his recall by Steve McLaren. He's trying to pick out Heskey. Heskey. Or is the result? Heskey has drifted out of the game a bit now, Ed, and we haven't seen much of Heskey in the second half. Even though England have scored a goal, Heskey's had very little to do with it. Just wondering how much longer he look at him. Gary's corner and a free header for Micah Richards. Three strikes for England. And it could be 
out go the lights for Israel. Turn out the lights, the party's over. The keeper got caught completely. I'm not sure what he was doing. Well, Micah Richards capping a very impressive display. Another one in an England shirt for the 19-year-old. Rising unchallenged. Watch the keeper, bud. Watch the keeper. Here's the keeper coming out, and uh, he got he got picked off. That's what happened to him. The keeper got picked off, and I know the Israeli players are complaining that uh, the keeper was not allowed to play the ball. But I think it's not a great complaint. The man who picked him off on the way in was John Terry, making sure the keeper couldn't get to it. But you can't take anything away from Richards. Absolutely brilliant goal. Struck it so well. All right, there was nobody in the net, but uh, he rose to it well. Now, the uh, Israeli keeper, Dudu Awat, was uh, booked in the aftermath. That goal for protesting. Now, Ben Ayoun. You know, Ferdinand reading his intentions. Well, Steve McLaren was waiting for... That's the comfort zone to start making changes. Uh, and they're surely there now. Midway through the second half. And you imagine that, that he'll want to protect Steven Gerrard, Tommy. So uh, you mentioned Emil Heskey. Perhaps. But I'm not sure if Heskey will play the next day at all. Like with Crouch coming back, it's possible. So he might leave Heskey on. I mean, I don't think I'd be taking Heskey off. I might be taking him off because of his lack of involvement of recent times. But uh, with a 3 0 lead now, he can basically do what he wants. Well, it does pose an interesting problem, doesn't it, for Steve McLaren against Russia on Wednesday? Does he stick with what works so well here? The old time partnership, if you will, between Heskey and Owen, or either Crouch becomes available again. Oh, I think it'll be Crouch. I mean, that partnership between Owen and Heskey worked well in the first half. Since about 30 minutes into the game, Heskey has slipped out of the game quite considerably. That's Gerard. That's bad news right there. That's that foot. Well, this could indeed be the End of the line on this evening for Steve Gerrard. And uh, what a reception he gets. Just overextended in trying to dig away for the ball. An inquiry from Steve McLaren as to... Why would you leave him on? Well, he is staying on, that is... Quite astonishing, the crowd uh, greeting it with a huge cheer, but... This battle seems to have been won already, Tommy, but uh, the bigger picture, the route to Austria and Switzerland still remains cl a cloudy one and a problematic one for England. Benny Yoon staying busy, but uh, trying to do it all in the zone. Just hasn't had enough support, has he? This is Barry. Joe Cole rather losing his way. I mean, we've seen one English player, Banjax himself, trying to play through injuries in Beckham. I, I just don't understand how Stephen Gerrard is still in the field out there. England's leading 3-0. The guy obviously has a problem. Do you need him out there now, or do you need him on Wednesday? Especially given uh, that midfield seems to be the area where England have suffered most in the injury department. So it's going to be potentially midfield, but certainly up front where the changes do start to happen now because Andrew Johnson and Phil Neville are standing by. Emil Heskey is the man to make way for Andrew Johnson. This makes sense, taking off Gerard. And finally, it is Gerard who uh, 
takes a seat. I think I could manage this team. That's who I said to take off those two guys, Heskey and Gerard. Well, there were a lot of names on the shortlist when the uh, job became available following Sven Joran Eriksson's step down. Mine was another thing. Must have been some mistake, Tommy. Must have been. Phil Neville coming on to win his uh, 57th cap. Amazing, isn't it, that Philip Neville has 57 caps? Andrew Johnson winning just his eighth. Still looking for his uh, first goal as a full England international. England three, Israel nil. The early breakthrough through Sean Wright Phillips after 19 minutes. And perhaps should have been further in front before the break. They had to wait till just after it to extend their lead. With a, a scintillating goal from Michael Owen. And then uh, Micah Richards just a few minutes ago. Putting them further in front. Israel side. He's suffering without uh, Roberto Colauti, the top scorer. But let's not forget, this is the side that have caused all sorts of problems for the likes of uh, Russia and France and Switzerland and Ireland over the last uh, two or three years in international football. Just one defeat in 19 competitive internationals heading in. But they've been soundly beaten here Andrew Johnson trying to inflict further pain yeah it hasn't been a good performance by uh, Israel at all even in the early going when it was still nil nil I mean they still looked a little bit soft at the back they looked like they were going to give something up well, Michael Sandberg will uh, be Third switch for Draw Kashtan. And he'll head out to that left hand side uh, in place of uh, Yaniv Kadan. Zamberg, who was very close to moving to Sheffield United last summer. Their relegation put an end to that move. He stayed with Baitar Jerusalem. day here in England where the England football team were playing alongside the English rugby and cricket sides at the same time. Doesn't happen too often. <laughs> Benny Yoon outside to Spingen who's uh, worked some space for the shot. Yuval Spungen. The right fullback. Producing uh, Israel's first real effort on goal. It comes with just over a quarter of an hour to go. Yeah, but Aaron doesn't look all that worried about it. McLaren and Venables trying to chart the path for England to Austria and Switzerland. Still some mighty big hurdles to clear. One of them looming large on Wednesday in the shape of Gus Hiddick and Russia. And they'll arrive full of confidence after another uh, comfortable win today against Macedonia. qualifying campaign where the heavyweights are not having it all their own way Tommy no it's 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 become a much more uh, level playing field let me tell you you just can't take anything for granted nowadays a team such as uh, Italy and Spain are in a certain amount of trouble <laughs> the 
about the English rugby side. I can tell you they're currently leading the United States by 28 points to three in the Rugby World Cup. That was a close game with Australia and Japan, wasn't it? 91 to three. <laughs> That's that is incredible. New Zealand 76, Italy 14. Yeah, if the world of international football is uh, seeing the lower teams close the gap on the big ones, perhaps uh, rugby not quite there yet. They're not taking any away from the Japanese, they were definitely very brave, but they just couldn't compete. Joe Cole's uh, chip delivery, just finding Michael Owen offside. Michael Owen has paid his dividends for the day. One good goal. That's enough for any striker. Michael Owen's road to recovery. It's certainly one that uh, all English fans will have been keeping a close eye on. Score in that uh, away win against Estonia back in June. There's a man still looking for his first goal of any sort this season, Andrew Johnson. Yeah, a man who burst on the scene and there was a lot of talk about how he was going to be the most fantastic striker of all times. He's had a few problems living up to that kind of a reputation as anybody would have, but he's definitely a hard goer. 11 goals last year with Everton in his first season after that move from Crystal Palace. Of course, he's got uh, Yakubu alongside him now. Goodison Park. Chris Bard has turned the ball into his own net, giving up an own goal for Northern Ireland against Latvia. Northern Ireland were flying. Certainly Northern Ireland and Scotland uh, Two sides from this part of the world who have high hopes of causing an upset and knocking out one of the big boys along the road to Austria and Switzerland. The Republic of Ireland will hope for the same sort of uh, performance. Take on Slovakia later. made by Phil Neville, Andrew Johnson back to propel England forward Gareth Barry has looked uh, perfectly at ease, perfectly at home now he has Owen Hargreaves and it seemed Michael Carrick ahead of him in the pecking order for that uh, central defensive midfield position behind Stephen Gerrard he hasn't done anything to hurt his chances the day he's played well. This is Joe Cole. England quite content to slow things down with just over 10 minutes left on the clock. Three points are safely in the bag. Three points that will bring them level terms with Israel with the game in hand. And now with the head to head advantage as well. It will be fascinating to see how Steve McLaren lines up against Russia now with the more options. If Owen Hargreaves is fit and available, does he uh, come back into the side, Tommy? The expense of Gareth Barry or recall for Carrick? I think that uh, Barry stays the way he's played today. Although the opposition hasn't looked that good now. And Disappointed the way Israel played. Of course, you can only play as well as your left. Israel has not played very well today. Yeah. We have ten minutes to 
leave a lasting impression at the end of the game. They've won a free kick. But they've left a lasting impression, all right. How ineffective, ineffective they have been. That's the impression I've seen from them. Mind you, I've seen them play a couple of really good games, a couple of great games against Ireland and France. Why did you pick those teams to play well against? They don't play well against England. <laughs> Benny Ewan's service was uh, certainly an intriguing one. Paul Robertson decided to uh, come and meet it. Didn't really get much on it. That's a beautiful chipped inside. Watch the keeper come out. There's a lot of bodies in front of him. He does enough to get the ball out of there, and that's all you, that's all you ask for a keeper in that situation. He's been under a lot of pressure too. A lot of people are taking special notes about him. They had uh, next to nothing to do for close to 80 minutes. Always one of the toughest tasks for a goalkeeper, isn't it? To stay mentally alert. Ashley Cole's long pass out of defence, asking uh, Andrew Johnson to run on. I wouldn't imagine that McLaren's doing any car tweets just yet, but it's a step in the right direction. Certainly after a sputtering campaign. A draw at home to Macedonia was the first major hiccup. <laughs> it's going to be David Bentley who uh, comes on last eight minutes and uh, a natural switch in terms of position Sean Wright Phillips a very effective outing for him his second goal in an England shirt was the one that provided the all-important breakthrough and now a man who is perhaps the long-term future of uh, England in terms of uh, someone who might replace David Beckham David Bentley, uh, very adaptable, very intelligent player with a great right foot, plays for Blackburn Rovers. He scored uh, the first England goal of any sort at this uh, new Wembley Stadium back in March when it opened up. That came in an under-21 international against the Italians. I guess you keep in count. You two have scored again for Romania 3 1. Bentley, of course, uh, raised a lot of eyebrows by uh, declining the invitation to go with uh, the under 21 side and play in the European Championships. A lot of people thought he shouldn't have been recalled to the full national team squad because of that decision, Tommy. I'm not sure I didn't know the circumstances behind it. Sometimes it's very easy to say, yeah, he made the wrong decision, but uh, obviously McLaren felt that he didn't. He was under that much pressure that he had to take it back on. I mean, if the manager wants him to play, that's good enough for me. Spungen finding no joy against Ashley Cole. again and the same end result Frank Lampard looking on Michael Carrick and Peter Crouch also uh, on the England bench there's a whole English team there you could put a team out there's Jolyon Lescott who was uh, called up for the very first time the Everton centre back who's been so impressive this season and last year for that matter I think there's great depth for England. The problem is that much of the depth is all around the same kind of quality players. That that's the problems that McLaren has. That after you get by a few, now Benny Yoon trying to ghost his way around John Terry, who uh, reacted very effectively. Dudu Awat was under uh, pressure to clear there. A 
Richards. Owen unable to uh, corral the ball. And uh, some of the uh, crowd departing early, trying to uh, beat the traffic in North London. 10,000 Israeli fans in attendance, but uh, had uh, too much uh, to inspire them to make any noise. England's first victory in their new home is assured. Margin of victory remains in question, though, as uh, Owen is released here. Oh, it's blocked on the goal line. Michael Owen had latched onto Andrew Johnson's through ball, rounded the keeper. But what defensive work here to deny Owen. Yeah, that'll be the one thing that a lot of people will take out of this game. Michael Owen scored a beautiful goal, but Michael Owen, on a better day or a better player, might have had a hat-trick. Remember the one he hit the first half off the keeper? There's another one should have went in. So that, a lot of people will be talking about that. Joab Ziv to the rescue for Israel. Oh, Richards was sensing another possibility there from a corner kick. He's already scored from one. And close to connecting. <laughs> Just announcing that the man of the match award has gone to Sean Wright Phillips. This is how Andrew Johnson set up Michael Owen well, Michael Owen looked like he did the hard work by getting it around the keeper but he just doesn't get enough onto it then he avoids the keeper's tackle maybe he should have went down and got himself a penalty kick but he was being honest about it Owen could have nudged to one closer to Bobby Charlton with that one He's now 11 behind him with 38 goals for England Charlton's record of uh, 49 still stands. Gary Lineker in second place. 85,000 in attendance here at Wembley. Close to capacity. This is David Bentley. Well shielded by Yuav Ziv. that did go in for Michael Owen. Excellent technique, wasn't it? The half volley from the edge of the area. Yeah, it was a lovely goal, really well taken. Not one of those goals that you expect from Michael Owen. It's not the type of goal that Michael Owen scores. We generally remember him using all that great speed, but I think maybe he's lost a step or two. Now he's going to make up for it and score brilliant goals from just on the edge of the box. Inside the final minutes, Israel looking for some sort of consolation. Michael Richards with other ideas, but uh, momentum still with the visitors in this particular passage of play. Except that Sprungen decides to go backwards. Danny Yoon helping it on, but only Philip Neville. Just the two minutes of additional time to be played. Really been any major stoppages for injuries in this one. Main injury, perhaps, Tommy, to Israeli pride because they really thought they had a chance of uh, upsetting the odds here. I must say that I thought they had an opportunity to get a result, but the way they played the day. There are very few teams in the world to get a result against. They showed, I mean, they came out and they wanted to keep it close, and it just didn't work for them. I mean, uh, Ziv got taken to the cleaners that many times by Sean Wright Phillips, and then Sean Wright Phillips scored the goal, and that was the end of it. Richards back to Robinson. If there are questions to be answered about England's 
Goalkeeping situation. There wasn't really enough uh, evidence to provide any answers today for Steve McLaren. It's another clean sheet for Paul Robinson. Or perhaps be allowed to savour this for a couple of hours, Tommy, and then it'll be uh, immediately down to business and preparing for the arrival of Russia and what will surely be a sterner test on Wednesday. Yeah, you would imagine that it'd be a much sterner test. But then again, you never know. These things, the way European football goes anymore, it's hard to tell from one week to one day to the next. England uh, still have to go to Russia. It's the last uh, remaining away game for them. But their European qualification campaign is firmly back on track after this uh, fairly comfortable 3-0 win here against Israel. Wright Phillips, Owen, and uh, first ever England goal for Micah Richards doing the damage. It was all over, really, midway through the second half. And uh, great news for England that Michael Owen is back amongst the goals. England 3, Israel 0 is the final score. We'll be back to wrap things up from Wembley after these words. This September, ESPN has a month to remember with sports action from around the globe. The quest for the ultimate prize of European football begins when the UEFA Champions League returns for another season on ESPN. The top open-wheel drivers race on in more IndyCar series racing. The hard-hitting action of American football hits the gridiron for the start of the NFL regular season. The women of the WNBA continue the march to the championship with the WNBA playoffs. Major League Baseball heads into the final month of the regular season as the top clubs vie for a spot in the playoffs. The League of the Stars returns to ESPN, showcasing the top clubs and players in Spanish football. It takes nerve of steel and a little luck to win in the 2007 World Series of Poker. Unbelievable action this September on ESPN. Heroes Mohamed Ali, he's great sportsman greatest sportsman and uh, greatest actor. It's not enough to be good sportsman. It's very important to bring, to take attention of society. Mohammed Ali was the greatest athlete and also the greatest person and uh, greatest human being. I mean, being so popular all over the world. Years ago, when I used to try to imitate Mohammed Ali, doing a shuffle, doing all that stuff, and then realizing that that really wasn't you. You know, you have to be able to be creative yourself. And after when I was starting to create things myself, I realized that I had the right tools, you know, and uh, that I was being me and not somebody else. It's not about Fisk's home run or Kirk's Big Joe Carter's or even Mag's. It's not about the bottom of the ninth inning with two on and two out in a tie ball game with their shutdown closer warming up in the pen. And it's not about believing that taking a cap off and turning it inside out can make a baseball go 500 feet. It's not about any one thing. It's about when it all comes together. The perfect game. Indians Angels, Monday on ESPN. So it's all over. England have their uh, first competitive victory at Wembley Stadium. First victory of any sort, actually, for the full national side and a comprehensive one, too. As uh, they beat Israel here by three goals to nil. Israeli side who previously suffered only uh, one defeat in 18 competitive games were really uh, undone here. A very effective uh, English display. And English fans departing will be hoping that uh, Steve McLaren's men can produce more of the same this coming Wednesday. Because uh, Russia are up next. Gus Hiddink's men after uh, beating Macedonia 3-0 today. We'll uh, head in still ahead of England in the Group E standings. But England will be able to turn that around with another victory.
You can see it here on ESPN. ESPNSoccerNet.com, the time to go, the place to go for all the times and details. Uh, Thursday morning, for those of you watching Down Under.